Hello, this is Devin Sandwich from MXV Rail, and I'm here to talk a little bit about what's going to be in our 2024 release. And very excited to show you a little bit about what's going to be the out file read in and reanimate so that you don't have to run the whole simulation over again. And you can do this right within the UI. And also to show you where this is a good use of the new technology and maybe how it might help you in your individual projects and the things you're trying to work on on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. So as you can see up here, I have the new cars control panel and an instance of the new cars UI behind it. I'm actually going to be starting in param view. If you would like some more detail on that, we have a video right now out on YouTube that you can see that the Patty Schreiber produced, but I'm going to skip a few steps there. So if you have more interest in param view, please go check that video out with the job dispatcher. I'm going to open up param view. I've already selected a file and also selected the text that I want to replace. So I'm just going to finish that. And I'm basically this example is trying to figure out at what speed a vehicle might start hunting. So what I'm using here is the 2016 empty hopper sample vehicle that's included in new cars and the KR wheel profile on the hunting track that's in chapter 11. So I'm going to go ahead and create the varied files. And what this will do is it's going to create seven files that will give me an opportunity to get a speed sweep. I'll see when the car starts to behave with some lateral instability and at what speeds I need to start being cautious for my potentially upcoming test or in what scenarios it might be of interest to be watching for lateral stability issues. So I've created those files. They've shown up here in my example file. You can see ParamView did add a leader to those to help me keep these files separate. So it's one of the advantages over using a text editor is it kind of creates those files for you and puts a little bit of a indicator about what has changed potentially. And you can control that with what you put in ParamView. So what I'm gonna do is also use job dispatcher job dispatcher to run these. However, I do want to jump in and look at my list file that ParamView has created. OK, so for files that are created with ParamView, you're going to have this leading uh, space that's going to exist in the file. It's just what ParamView puts in. If you come in, you're using TextPad or some similar editor it may work a little bit differently. But for TextPad, you can hold the Alt key and start highlighting and that'll allow you to highlight columns of data You can just delete that and then hit save and you'll have what is a perfect list file for feeding into job dispatcher which will be the next step here so i'm calling up job dispatcher and again the purpose of doing the simulation is to get a speed sweep so each of these has a different input velocity and it's going to be constant in this case so i've called up my list file that i just edited we're going to go ahead and prepare those simulations by default job dispatchers calling up the default executable path on my machine if you would like to use a different executable uh, previous executable from a previous year that's included in new cars you need to be using the batch file process so you can look at patty's video for that information but we're going to go ahead and kick this process off and i'm going to walk away and grab some coffee while this finishes up Okay, so through the wonders of digital media, you got to time travel into the future uh, about three minutes while these finished executing. And you can see now that the execution time is listed right here in Job Dispatcher and the time that I actually made the run. Some of this information can be kept in the uh, log output from Job Dispatcher. So you can look for that there. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is go back to the instance of the UI I already had open. And I'm going to browse for these files and previously you would not have seen these output files showing up as a supported file type in our previous releases you would have seen the run files but the out files are new so what i'm gonna do is say i would like to look at the 35 mile an hour example so it'll open that up it will let me know, oh, you've got some duplicate channels. I know this because of what I had in my DAT file. Perfectly fine and normal. And I'm going to get some other information also just about 
some output bodies, but it's just because I have some extra inputs in the DAT file. So nothing unusual about those messages showing up. And as you can see at the bottom, I have all of the playback for this run. So I can hit play. And my simulation will start going. You can see a little bit of lateral motion, but as you might expect, if you're familiar with this type of thing, 35 miles an hour, you're not likely to get much lateral excitement, even when some of the conditions are set up for it. So this is all well and good. You also can go back and look at other files. So let's maybe look at the 55 mile an hour run just for some contrast between the two. And again, we're going to get those messages just letting us know that there are pieces of information um, that are duplicated based on the way that the file is read in for the output. So we'll wait for that to continue to load. I did see this time change and I got another informational warning that there were some duplicate channels. Again, you know about those because you put them in the DAT file. So I'll hit play and our simulation will start running. And you can see a little bit more excitement and some more continued excitement throughout this run. So obviously the 55 mile an hour uh, made a difference. Okay, so I've done my analysis. This all looks great. I'm very happy about it. Awesome. But now I need to show somebody else. Well, as you know, we put some more um, interesting looking bodies, representations of bodies that you can now use in the UI. So what I'm gonna go back here and do is open that existing JSON file that is related to these two. I'll put this one open and we'll see that I have some better representation. So now I've got the car body, the bolsters and side frames, all that good stuff showing up in my simulation. And now I'm in a meeting. Somebody wants to say, hey, can I see that 35 mile an hour run again? You don't have to go all the way back out, find the out file and get that representation. Instead, what you can do is come in here and just click. I'll see that 35 mile an hour representation. Now it's very critical as a user as this thing loads. I'm going to tell you that you really want to make sure that your JSON files and your sys files are in sync together because you could be showing something that's out of sync with what you're uh, representing in the visual 3D aspect. So um, you do want to be very careful of that, but it does allow you to do this and actually give those simulations to somebody right away. Okay, again, you've shown them, hey, not a very big deal at 35 miles an hour. So let's come back out. Let's go ahead and load up the 60 mile an hour case. Again, same warning message as you were getting previously. So wait for that to come on in. We'll see here that you're going to be able to, to show off that, that lateral instability that was induced because of the combination of the track, the wheel profiles, and the car, and the inertial properties. And there we go, all working wonderfully. Okay. I'm gonna jump back out quickly just to show you. Uh, I am gonna pull in, I'm not gonna save any of this, but I am gonna pull back in one of those out files. I wanna show you one of the key pieces that we've also added. Um, in new cars, by default, your out file will be named the same as your run file. So those two things should be linked together. So I think it's very important as a user to keep that in mind. And one of the things that we've done is we automatically search. When you load an out file from the dashboard, we automatically search for that run file. And we're gonna come up here and you can see this run file information from your simulation. So this can give you an idea of what you were showing in the out file and the run file. Again, it's your responsibility not to rename those files and confuse them, but uh, assuming you leave everything kind of the way new cars produces it at the uh, onset, you shouldn't have any problem with that. So um, again, here's kind of the setup. If you wanted to run a similar experiment for yourself, you could with some of the files. These are all included in the new cars library. So you could build something up similar, or if you have your own test, uh, I hope you get some use out of both the out file, the out file read-in, excuse me, and also um, 
some of the other features we've added with the visualizations and um, a little bit more focus on param view that we've shown in this video and others. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you found it informative and helpful, and I hope you're excited about the 2024 release and some of the new features you'll be able to use. We always welcome your input at and you can give that back to us at newcars at AAR.com. So please feel free to email us if you have any questions or comments or things you'd like to see in these upcoming videos. We'd love to produce something that you'd like to see. Thank you so much.